Yes, and that was, as I was mentioning about hitting jaws and cannon into reds, it nearly happened there. Actually, forcing Ding into playing safety shot. Be careful here. <laughs> Just got the red a little bit too thick, and this is a chance for Marco. I'm sure he'll take this red away for the pink or the black. Play for the pink, but boy, he was a long way away with that red. Didn't even get in the jaws. I didn't think it was going to be much of a problem to hit this. There's that cluster of four behind the black. He should be able to avoid the red that's in the open on the left. Oh, it's pacey and he's too narrow. Well, he hits it, but what a careless shot that was. John, why has he played it that way? Surely twice across the table, coming in the other angle for the reds on the right-hand side is the shot to play. You can't leave one. I don't honestly know why he played it that way. Playing it the other side, and now not only has he left the red, perfect angle on the black. Very strange way to play that. Yeah, and well, he did hit the red, but so you could say he just hit it much too hard. But as you say, the way he went was very risky, and it could. No, I think there's nothing wrong with the line, but uh, he just hit it too hard. But looking at it, he was, wasn't he coming down that side of the table. You play it the other way, John. You take the loose red out of the equation completely. It's not even a, an option for Ding to go at, but um, there you go. You live and die by your decisions on a snooker table. And for me, that wasn't a good one. Anyway, Ding Junwee's had a good look at these four reds. How is he going to bring them in to play? Well, he decided to go into them with pace. Sometimes Eight. you can play a control. Felt that he needed to split them open, and this red does go to the right corner. So it's pretty good. He's just five points behind. Frame winning chance, you'd have to say. And I don't blame him for having the cue ball clean there. Sometimes these little shots can get a kick. No. And you feel certain that the red on the left hand side is going to be very key in this frame. I fancy Ding removing these two reds. It's all about what he can do with that red on the left hand side. 16. Seventeen. Maybe would have liked to have been a little bit further up the table. I think he's come straight enough on this black. And he's trying to force over for the red in the same pocket. And did it comfortably? So there's a good angle on the black 24. to get on the awkward last red. But it's not tight against the cushion, so any reasonable sort of positional shot will do. And play for the black in the same pocket as the red. 25. It's always nice if you've got the red you're trying to get on in your eye line, but I don't know. He's not absolutely inch perfect on this black. Good queuing needed. No. 
Not good enough. 32. 19 points to lead. Looking at the scoreboard, red, black, yellow would be sufficient. Will that tempt him into the double? It's a possibility. And he's got the brown as a little bit of insurance. Is it worth the risk? All week about how Ding Xun Wei's matured as a snooker player and his shot selection's improved and, and a much all-round better player. We'll find out now what he's going to do. Would you play the double, John? Oh, yes, I wouldn't even think about it, to be honest with you. You know, it's helped a bit by the brown being safe, but if he knocks this double in, he gets on the black, you feel. Close. Wait, 32. Yes, can't blame him. And he played it pretty well as well, didn't he? Played at a pace to keep position, but also where the red's finished. You know, that's why we never like playing the doubles, because once they hit the jaw of the middle pocket, you don't know where the red's going to finish up. But that was the perfect jaw, if you like, if you're going to miss it. So this frame, still very much on. Expecting to play the pot. I mean, I'm not doubting him, but did he play that? There was no hand up of apology or anything like that, so I presume he did. I don't think Ding can quite believe that red went in. But he certainly I played this, one. and if it rolls in the snooker. That'd be the shot. And of course, the key to that John, shot, John, was he brought the brown into play. Yes, and brought it into play right in the middle of the table. Great shot that was. Very well thought out. Wide open, so the frame now. Long way away. Oh, and a miss. Marco that is the problem with this shot. We can draw the line where he's going to play, but he wants a cushion and hits the yellow off one cushion. He's more than likely going to knock the yellow. I don't think that white is anywhere near where it should be. Yes, I agree with you, John. That's not in the right place there. It just makes such a difference, doesn't it? Particularly when you're trying to slide off a cushion and make it two cushions, and you, and you can see how close he's got to get to that corner pocket. That's what he's trying to do, and the white isn't exactly where it was before, so it just makes the adjustment slightly more difficult. But once again, not got the pace of this. Oh, and the miss. Marco Fulfo. These points are adding up. Will he catch the jaw? That's what will oh, happen, you see. You get so close to the pocket, you catch the jaw, and you don't hit the yellow. It's a very difficult shot, this. <laughs> Marco just sat there with a little smile on his face, because now he's only six points behind. That's not hard enough, is it? This misrule at the end of frames, John, what a difference it makes. It does, but it's in this situation, it's absolutely right. I mean, you know, Ding can get down and play this a lot harder and, and hit the yellow full-bloodedly, but he does, of course he doesn't want to. That's his choice. And he doesn't want to hit the cushion and miss He'll the leave it on. And that's what he was frightened of from the word go. And in the end, that's what he's done. That makes the points level. Marco Fu to now needs green, brown, blue 
and the pink. Yes, green to brown, no problem. And the blue over on that side cushion shouldn't be either, with Marco being right-handed. Yeah, sorry, John, my mistake, of course. With that many fouls being Marco given away. Would crept into the lead. I thought he was still two points behind. So just brown and blue needed. What a snooker that turned out to be. And the last red, well, I question whether he even played the pot. But it's turned this frame on its head. Nine. Mm, the one place you didn't want to finish. Close to the cushion, playing the blue into a blind pocket. Yes, and more importantly, close to the blue. At least I always felt as if you could see the angle a little better. When they're close like this, it's very difficult to work out. Oh, this is a big shot. Yeah, you just feel that it's missable. A lot of hard work's gone into this frame. It's there, yeah. and it never touched a side. Okay. So Ding Jun Wei will be wondering at the moment where his next frame's going to come from. He started the evening 6 2 in front. It looks certain now to be 6 5. Didn't bother with the pink. Marco Ding Jun Wei will come back to the table, obviously. Just needing the one snooker, 16 points. The difference, 13 left on the table. It's not a bad line. It's not a bad line. It's a perfect line. Well, I now beg the question, John, why did Marco Fool try and pop the pink? Well. You're quite right, John, but that is a wonderful shot from Ding. Enough space to go round the back of it. It's one of those, if it was nearer the jaws, it'd be virtually unmissable. But where it is, it's one of those ones you can go right round the angles and miss it by a wafer. Yeah, you won't see many better snookers than that. And if he's going to come off the left-hand side cushion first, he's definitely missable. I'd do anything here but play this shot. And he's missed the pink, Ding he's Ding gone Ding in the six. pocket. And Ding Jun Wei from looking down and out in this frame, it's just the pink and black away from winning it. What a turnaround. Well, this could be pivotal with a capital P. What a frame of snooker. Six. Incredible. Well, it is absolutely amazing the things that can happen on a 12 foot by 6 foot table. Ding Jun Wei looks at